We're totally imbued, we're totally imbued, and getting ready for the show. Jackass, we're live, boys ah. and girls. <laughs> hey. Tuesday night, welcome aboard. This is Between the Rolls, uh, our little stab at a talk show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am Frank, your host, and I'm going to tell you to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like none of us are currently wearing, but, you know, I've got my phone case here. That is fun. Uh, the link is down there somewhere. I'm at master control today, so the cameras are a little bit off. I'll get those fixed for you in just a second. Uh, don't forget, if you're in the market for some dice, go ahead and go over to Twitter. Hit up at Pirate Dog Dice. They'll make you some custom dice, or they won't. It's hard to say, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. And of course, if your game or your show stinks, uh, go on over to oddfishgames.com, grab yourself one of 60 different adventure scents. Uh, they do not have COVID scent yet. They're still working on that. Kyle is their <laughs> test subject right now. Wouldn't it be unscented? Oh, nice, because you can't smell. That's a nice yeah. touch. <laughs> uh, and again, folks, as always, uh, another plug for MurderHoboCon.com. That's coming to you Friday, or Friday, February, uh, the weekend right before Valentine's Day. So if you don't want to be an ignorant git, go ahead and purchase some tickets for you and your significant other and uh, show up, because once you buy the badge, Tickets to all the games and events are free. Uh, and you know what? I think we're going to show you what our venue is. Not tonight, but, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand the concept of the virtual venue. All of that being said, this is Between the Rolls, our talk show. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the people who are going to make you think, like I didn't know how to play D&D. Uh, we'll start with you, David. I'm going to fuck with the cameras. Mature audiences only. Yeah, folks, in case you haven't seen our mature audience warning. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Dave. Uh, yeah, I am a regular on the Calamity campaign. I am. Uh, I played the druid, Ingve. I'm also a crow on the B side of the Calamity campaign. Also, I'm playing our Cacophony episodes that we have. And uh, I play Zadar. And then... Also, you can catch me here on Between the Rolls, or uh, you can catch me on a one-shot every once in a while. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I'm one of those people, those players that don't know how to play. I just come up with shit, and it just either works or it doesn't. <laughs> so That would be Murder Hobo style. Uh, yep. Next up is, of course, Kyle. Kyle, who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you here? Are you running for any political offices? I am, as a matter of fact. Uh, you heard about that, huh? I heard I, that you had uh, COVID Zeta. COVID Zeta, that is right. I now have a vestigial tail, uh, which qualifies me to run as junior committee person of vestigial tails in uh, uh, the state of Iowa. So I... Uh, Get out there, vote all you Iowans, and uh, anyone else who wants to throw in their vote illegally anyway. <laughs> Grab you by the tail. That's your, that's your uh, slogan. That is, right? exactly, yeah. Yeah, Kyle Tails. There we go, like oh, DuckTales. Nice. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> nice. Uh, I oh. am go Kyle. Ahead. I am the DM on Thursday night's cred campaigns where I run through four murder hobos through a uh, Cthulian uh, and sometimes just regular horror horror campaign. Uh, you had the chance to kill those bastards. Uh, why really don't you did. go ahead and give us a run through uh, on that particular episode? I believe it was episode 323 uh, in the cred campaign this past week. All you, Kyle. <laughs> Not in the cred campaign, but 323 in general. Uh, we did discuss how uh, uh, we have been doing cred for over a year now. Uh, as we delayed until all of the party could actually show up to play, which we did swimmingly. <laughs> so if you like a little bit of banter at the front of your podcast, I would say last Thursday offered a good deal. Uh, the players themselves, the party have been underground for several weeks now, although in game time, it's only been a couple of days uh, and they had reached the end, the big 
giant green Wilkemite doors of horror. Uh, and like all parties do when you tell them that there's a monster potentially on the other side that will petrify their characters, they slowly crawled forward, skipped any of the side passages, <laughs> and said, there's a giant curtain. Let's try and figure this out. <laughs> Cowards. I laughed if somebody would have got petrified. <laughs> we came pretty close. Came close. <laughs> I did, oh yeah, gosh. <laughs> uh, the players continued through the green doors, figuring out there was nothing too terrifying about them. Um, gathered up some loot uh, that they had missed earlier, and then proceeded to piss off a great old one by messing with its statue and thus uh, angering a giant terrible monster uh, that could hit them just about every single roll uh, as well as begin to petrify them. The players have lost dexterity and are slowly turning into withered corpses, which is delightful on my end. It's great. Hey, if Ernie's the last man standing, he's going to be checking them down lava tubes. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> and writing a book. Yeah. <laughs> so as this monster emerged, uh, there was a bit of a, a titanic fight between a show show golem, uh, which is a flesh golem mutated by uh, the inhuman humans show shows. Um, and essentially, while that was happening, the players tried to survive, either escaping the rootlings' clutches, the large tentacled monster that came out at them, uh, avoiding eye contact. Or if you were Ernie, you were in a completely different room <laughs> ransacking everything you possibly could. I will say, he did have a good, good portion in his heart it's like oh there's a magical circle if i destroy that then that thing will go away now let's grab some books mm -hmm. <laughs> um i think in the vernacular that was he was a dick <laughs> yeah yeah but... he was a murder hobo there you go <laughs> uh he was uh very very true to his character and just wanting to preserve knowledge and really what's wrong with that um what was wrong with that was that the temple was coming down around them. They quickly became trapped inside, uh, but eventually they managed to find a crack in a wall appearing. And rather than hang out with the large tentacle monster that had crushed the golem single-handedly uh, and was starting to petrify the members of the party, they thought it best to skedaddle and run. Uh, and at the end of the episode, they managed to get out uh, on the island, back on the surface, um, no longer underground with those horrible, terrible things. That, that I, was Thursday. I, I was quite adamant about my opinion on what should have happened to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? I uh, This was something that had I had planned for a while because I was looking at that monster and I was just like, the DM side of me was like, yes, I can finally hit them and it'll be great and wonderful. And then I was like, oh, but this thing is going to kill them, really. <sighs> if you were kicking the shit out of them, it was hilarious. It back. Was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's why the golem was there with them. Um, Didn't it die? Oh, yes, it died. Yeah. And the best part is... And I hinted at this, and for those who haven't seen it, watch it. Um, there is now a dread vapor, a dread mist, that has at least seven or eight levels of dread in it that is currently looking for a host. Uh, Carol, so... Carol, Carol. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. I'm pulling for that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, there's a new player on the board that the players should be aware of, but uh, uh, we'll see how that ends up playing out in the rest of the campaign. Uh, and that was cred on Thursday. 
Cred will be back a week from this Thursday. This Damn. Thursday is Cacophony, so if you're into the Cthulhu horror, uh, check them out next Thursday. David, you had the next one up. Uh, you were playing in Calamity, if I am Calamity. not mistaken. Episode 324, not quite. Uh, still a full year, but less episodes than Cred. Go ahead. It's all Right, you right. So, yeah, Calamity. Wow. Saturday night, Saturday night's episode. Yes, that featured Jesse, myself, Rob, and our newest member, Kevin. And yeah, it was quite a show. <laughs> we we actually didn't get to too much, but we basically the episode opens. We're still getting our bearings straight with this. Uh, new member of our party now because uh yeah if you saw last episode yeah it was totally freaking confusing frank really threw one on us and it's just like we couldn't figure out if this guy was the good guy or the bad guy and kevin's the new guy in the in the campaign and i'm about to kill him so but yeah turned out it was big how's that any different from uh Oh my goodness, it's been too long. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I told Kevin to just go for it because yeah. not yeah. even Kevin realized that the PC he was playing was exactly the same as him, but it wasn't right. him. Right. <laughs> and he went ape shit on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. He did. And, uh, yeah, I was getting kind of nervous, but it was just like, okay. So, anyway, continuation from, from that episode. We, uh, yeah, take shelter with our friend. Uh, we rest up for a bit, and then we we move about the city. We uh, made the decision, or we're still trying to make the decision what to do. Uh, our new found associate, Tall, tells us that he saw one of us, Rakir, leave and head north, I believe. And uh, which was. We, Which was we a found... mistake. It's south. It's south. Folks, yeah. I, I don't know my ass from a hole in the ground and the map's upside down. He created this world. Anyway, Rakir headed south. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got to know Tal uh, a little bit more, a little bit more about his people and about this enemy that he had fought. And uh, as things became more clear and we made up, what our purpose for being in your known um, tall kind of tells us his uh, a little bit, tells us a little bit about his people. And we tell him uh, the quest that we are, we are on, which is actually trying to find a remedy for um, Azari's sister to come out of her perpetual sleep state. So, uh, yeah, so Tal tells us that there's somebody within uh, his community that may have the power to to heal her or not. And of course, Azari snaps too. Yeah, I see Frank holding it above his face. Uh, snaps too, and suddenly it's like, yeah, fuck Rick here. We're heading west. <laughs> We're heading west. So, so yeah. So anyway. That was that was the beginning part of the episode. The the middle and the latter ended up with us exploring and taking shelter in a building and uh, you know a building closer. Basically, what we ended up doing, yeah, is pretty much yeah raiding a CVS. <laughs> well, you know, trademark infringement there, but a pharmacy. So. Yeah, so uh, that turned out to be fun. I mean, we have one encounter with an undead within the inside. And of course, we uh, uh, loot and search the, the pharmacy itself after we break into the actual pharmacy area. So with some strength checks on that. And of course, Dave always passes. Anyway, so we finally break in. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much just a ransacked pharmacy with what we think and Paul thought at first were seeds on the floor so we collected them but they didn't smell natural so 
Uh, yeah, we collected that. Ingve looks at and finds a pretty sharp looking, uh, <laughs> clean, you know, white coat, like, um, you know, apparel. So, yeah, that's what it is with the name Melinda <laughs> and <laughs> embroidered on it. And yet we, Ingve can't read it. So he has no idea what the hell it says to him. It's just sigils. <laughs> So anyway, rummaging through the pockets, yeah, Ingve finds something that's kind of like a dart, and he assumes that it's that, but liquid fill. And yes, like most people who don't understand how vaccines work and things like that, neither does Ingve. But his excuse is that he doesn't even know what you know what a syringe is. So uh, he'll have to do his own research. So. <laughs> and Frank's hoping for I'm that. I'm still waiting for one of you guys to shoot up. <laughs> <laughs> it's either going to kill us or it's going to be the good stuff. And it's not going to do anything that we, we thought. I can just, yeah. Oh, man. Maybe it's an EpiPen. Maybe it's not. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Yep. And so, don't, don't forget the other magic item that uh, oh, yeah. Dave found. Oh, yeah. Uh, were, were they magic items? Or just no items. <laughs> okay, I was just like, oh, please tell me that they were magical. But he's, he's wearing it like a hat. It's certainly not magical now. <laughs> oh yeah. So we explore the the pharmacy some more. You know, there's rows of disheveled stuff. Uh, we totally glossed past the alcohol. <laughs> so I was expecting some comedy to ensue from that. Anyway, we're rummaging around. Dave's foraging around. There's also a cat that's in there that Yingve took interest in because he was going to find out more about this world from the cat with being able to talk to beasts. So the cat, yeah, was a typical cat. Didn't tell me much and then walked away. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, Dave was, uh, yeah, found some, some pretty cool items. Uh, one was neck pillow, which he's wearing on his head, kind of a la Napoleon style. And uh, yes, bunny slippers. Yes, folks. <laughs> Dave is the pink, barbarian. Pink bunny slippers. Pink bunny slippers with the googly eyes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, actually, his stealth will actually increase. <laughs> so, <laughs> so kind of magic. Quasi kind of magic. magic. Yeah. So anyway, we end up leading the uh, the pharmacy. Uh, we explore some buildings. One thing that the cat did tell Ingve is that the dead usually shelter during the day into random buildings. So we're being cautious. We explore a building. Turns out to be a pretty well-made building, like well as as far as aesthetics wise. Lots of marble. You know, Frank described it as like a lawyer's, you know, building or something like that, lawyer's uh, office. Anyway, so we ex explore that, we're light starting to fade. So, but one thing that we do notice is, yeah, lights are on in the building. So um, as we, we decide to try to take shelter on one of the floors, because of course we're worried about the dead sheltering in the building. So as we explore the floors, we pass one floor that, did we hear something or did we detect something, Frank? I think we detected through, detected. through divine sense, through tall that something evil was in the building. So we decided to go past the floors up to that and up to the roof. Roof is like a patio dining area for this building rooftops, uh, strange large boxes with fans with air that blows up through it. And uh, yeah, kind of like terpiaries, pergola and all that. So so we're exploring the sites. Classy joint. <laughs> it's a classy joint. So sun hasn't set yet. So we're still looking around. We can see movement across a green space from, from the building that, that we see. Uh, we can see some movement in other buildings. Uh, in another building down past the, the green space. Is that correct? 
And uh, as night starts to settle, uh, settle in, uh, everything suddenly is illuminated. Uh, there is electricity in the city of Yore. Thanks, courtesy of us, for a previous episode that we had. So anyway, lights come on. Uh, one thing, uh, there is an event. Uh, we think it's the dragon that is backed. You know, when, uh, I've got some questions about that because would we even know what a dragon is? Not really. You guys, We're just, shit. You can't, you guys don't even have a written language, for God's sake. You guys no, but we might morons. be legend or That's something. That's what this one is. So. It's not calamity. It's morons. <laughs> Pretty much. But it, 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 it's funny, nonetheless. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we see this thing. It looks like uh, it is actually on the scent or it's tracking us because it is, like, uh, appearing in places that we were. And uh, so we decide to kind of crouch down, take shelter and all that. But before we do, yeah, suddenly there is, you know, light, air and all that, that blows up like through, through the bottom of the roof, through the air conditioned vents and stuff like that. And lo and behold, yeah, we got an encounter coming folks. So we still have to see what it is. It hasn't been identified yet, but we're assuming it's the dragon or whatever it is. So coming up a anyway, three inch vent pipe. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> But anyway, folks, it's a great episode. If you haven't guessed it, it's kind of like zomb as of right now at this leg, it's just zombies in a post-apocalyptic world that we're trying to make our way through. So yeah, with we'll see how that goes. Yeah. With tieflings, yeah. So not bad. That uh, will be one week from Saturday. Saturday is a one shot. And if you want to be on it, hit us up, M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. But uh, Calamity and Cred are on the same week. Uh, finally, yes. Sunday uh, was the Margu episode, episode 325. This is the Margu B side. These guys are in the city, the walled city of Yintens. And in the previous episode, they went ahead and went through the catacombs, trying not to break shit breaking shit anyway they got above ground they managed to wipe out most of the bandit gang one of them got away uh and they spent the rest of the night trying to get food trying to get drinks and just having job after job piled on them um middle frank uh, who plays the crazy cleric, uh, decided, screw the inn, screw the tavern, I'm going to the house, because he bought a house a couple episodes ago. He gets there, and there's two mountain dwarves, and they offer him a big job to go investigate a ruined tower. Meanwhile, back at the tavern, uh, youngest Frank uh, was actually the spokesperson, and he got a job of transporting three people to another town, uh, a song and dance routine, that they can go ahead and accept. Uh, there was another job. I can't remember what it was. Uh, Alex, a.k.a. AJ, a.k.a. Rolf uh, the Mountain Dwarf, uh, discovered that he was actually close friends uh, with the mayor's daughter, <laughs> which is not going to go well. Uh, and uh, they met some uh, strange hill people led by a uh, 17 charisma hill female who is speaks eloquently and is nothing like her three cohorts uh, they also have a job for the party uh, they have also accepted a job for the party because lo and behold while middle frank went across the street to ling chang's uh chinese emporium to get some noodles he found the last member of the orphans uh and they dragged them back and subsequently killed said orphan in front of the city guards so small problem there uh but this is the b-side uh, as soon as jason and his son are ready we can go ahead and go back to a side in the rift to see if they can find the dragon's uh, horde. They can't. <laughs> uh, but that is the wrap up of all three games. 
uh, they are all on Twitch, they are all on uh, the YouTube collection, and if you don't want to look at the money makers, uh, they are also on Podbean on our audio only podcast, tinyurl.com slash mhoboinc audio. Uh, all of these are available, and remember, if you want to be in one, like this coming Saturday, hit us up and we will see what we can do for you. Uh, it's two hours, it's a good time. Uh, take it easy. Uh, folks, now we're going to go ahead and get to the second part. This is our first reel between the rolls of 2022 because we are doing the socium uh, mess and it's going to turn out real well. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about all human campaigns. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. Well, that's bullshit. I want to be some kind of three-legged minotaur, pirate, assassin, alchemist who has uh, every stat highlighted well tough shit okay if you want to try a real challenge be a regular human uh and i've said it before i'll say it again play something with uh, a problem a handicap a low score something that inhibits their ability to do things and i'm not talking physical disabilities uh specifically we all know who my favorite character is, and he's dumb as shit. So I like to play the stupid ones. So uh, you role play that, and you have fun. So uh, I was thinking about, okay, what would you do with an all-human campaign? Because, you know, it's Dungeons and Dragons. It's fantasy. You want magic and shit. There's a lot of weird stuff in here. Uh, so I was thinking, and we'll go ahead and talk this out uh, with the panel on, uh, again, campaigns versus one-shots. They're always different. So we'll start with the campaigns. Uh, Kyle hasn't spoken since the start, so we'll start with him. Uh, well, let's clarify real quick. When we say a human campaign, is it everyone, everything is human, or yep. the players are all human? Okay. The, the demi-humans and the monsters should be at bare minimum. Everywhere you go, you might you might hear of something, you know, oh, the vampire or werewolf in the woods... Does it pan out? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Normally it's bandits or something like that. So we're talking all human campaign, all human. maybe a handful of demi-humans at best, and maybe a few monsters. So your big threat are humans. And for those of you who grew up with Scooby-Doo, that fits, because <laughs> sure, it, sure. it's always old man always withers. <laughs> So, Kyle, what do you think is a good part? If if you think there's a good part, what do you think it is in a campaign of all humans? Um... <laughs> Not a fucking oh, that's a... <laughs> Because it's so rarely done, man. It's so very rarely done mm -hmm. um, that you could... And it's, <coughs> what is your goal? Well, do you want high fantasy? Do you want low fantasy? Um you said very few monsters uh -huh. um like for my all human campaigns the first thing that popped into my head was a a planet of the apes only it's planet of the humans there you go that... and we are starting with humans underneath of well either humans can create a monster that's trying to usurp them or humans can be said monster that is currently usurping uh, giants, dragons, elves, something like that. Robots. Um, robots, <laughs> sure, why not? Terminators. <laughs> nice. Um, or you can go in the direction of um, uh, a Beowulf tale, uh, an mm -hmm. epic poem where you you have very few monsters, but your role as players as you are <laughs> warriors mercenary groups trying to collect fame for yourself maybe at one point you'll take that fame trade it for a kingdom but you have to go out and say oh there's this uh there's this cannibal monster in a maze uh and people keep getting sacrificed to it let's just go put the thing out of its misery you go down there and turns out it's just a, a guy with a a bowl head mask on or something like that uh or maybe it is actually the minotaur that you have to now slaughter um and that leads to another thing that i've said on past between the roles which is um true monsters uh, uh the idea that you know there is a father a mother 
uh, uh, the one monster where all other monsters come from, at this point, you would get rid of all the other monsters and you would take, this is the Minotaur, capital T H E. <laughs> uh, and so you're going to take it from its uh, stat block in the book and you're going to make it worse for the players. You're going to make it grander, more mythic. Um, uh, there's also the other possibility of, um, I think Cthulhu works insanely well here. And I mean, Cthulhu is kind of designed more for average humans who uh, who get in way over their heads. And so translating cred into an all-human campaign could work fairly spectacularly. Although at that point, why aren't you playing Cthulhu? Sorry, COVID is getting at me right now. The other direction to go with this is, oh my gosh, answer questions and I'll end. Yeah, we'll take it over from it's here. It's the putrid man. sewer thing. Uh, David, what do you think? Yeah, what, what are the positives, if any, on uh, playing an all-human campaign? Well, positives on on playing an all-human campaign? Make stat blocks a lot easier so, for the DM. Uh, but uh, now it doesn't. Yeah, because you, you still, if you're going to level up, you're still yeah. going to have to do that. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Uh, well, the thing is, if you keep it human centric or whatever, you got a lot to work with. Surprisingly, you really do. I mean, especially if you, even if you're playing high fantasy, I mean, if you're creating a campaign human centric, you can use human history uh as you know a catalyst for for you know uh creating your your story and your setting um you know one of the things that you know like what we're we're going to discuss further is just like what if the humans are the monsters here you know and like we said you know it's still kind of fantastical that there's you know beings out there but it's uh creatures and it's few and far between um one of the things that i remember as a kid growing up there was this movie it was an animated movie called fantastic planet i don't know if frank remembers that it was animated it was a french film and um the humans were actually pets they were pets to a, a race of giant uh, beings comparatively to what humans were but the moral of the story is is that the beings you know i mean is it, it it sounded awful that you know the humans being kept as pets but the thing is in the end it turned out that the humans were way worse than you know their captors and all that they were what? using them as pets yeah no oh, oh come on they killed that one being man <laughs> So but to be fair, I haven't seen this movie or show. It's a so. great movie, and yeah, it was made it's made ten a, years before you were born, at uh, least. Probably a little more than that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's a great film, and that's a great thing to get inspiration out of. Because, like we said, uh, other things are that that I can take uh, use as an example. Like, okay, take out the undead element of it. Uh, Twenty eight days later uh the they were infected by a contagion that caused rage it caused this condition called rage as a matter of fact that's what they called the contagion and you know that's a great catalyst to you know if you want to keep uh any any you know fantastic creatures out of it and something like that i mean that's something that you can go with you don't even have to do the undead side of it it could just be people just go, shit just gets crazy, you know, when you get hit with this contagion, you know, there, there, there's novels that are based on, on, in stories on uh, that kind of premise too. The crazies. So, yeah, exactly. Which they just remade and I heard they did a great job of it. Uh, give me so. a break. <laughs> Um, no, this is the second remake of. I'm sorry, the the roll of the eyes. 
from Frank there. Yeah, that was priceless. That was a big one, man. Jesus <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of. Oh, this is my this is my vision of fuck off. Right. Okay, it's been done. <laughs> yeah, it's been done. George Romero did it best, and he did it first. That's so. right. But uh, but yeah, like the crazies. That's that's a good example where it turned out it was a uh, external contaminant that was uh, causing you know the change in human behavior you know so i was gonna say yeah you just set human civilization what 10 20 years after a zombie apocalypse and at that point most of the guns probably don't have ammunition anymore so we're back to swinging swords and spears um oh, yeah. and oh, artificial calamity yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, come yeah. on, that's that's more than twenty years, I think. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> um, the buildings are still intact. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, while I still have a speaking voice at the moment, uh, uh, um, and I'm sorry if, if I'm interrupting any your train. You are, of thought and there. you're horribly, horribly. I am offensive. terribly. I <laughs> usually am. That's what that's what everyone tells me. Um, the other way to go about this would be say to go from the uh, Dresden Files angle. There is an entire magical world, but nobody knows about it. The humans are prey, but they're willfully ignorant prey. And you guys are somehow made aware. Uh, Another example of this um, would be um, Brennan Lee Mulligan, his campaign, his New York City campaign, where everybody is essentially a human except for uh, a a New York City rat druid uh, uh, who is the only non-human. Everyone else is human, just discovering the other side um, that uh, the Santa parade in New York City is actually far worse and far more sinister than anyone would would have you believe um and so uh, running a campaign where it's these people who are becoming wise to the other side and then you generally get to uh put them in a spot where it's like okay do you reveal this to the world or do you try and contain the secrets you might at first try and contain secrets and try and protect people but at some point, there's usually that very interesting question of, well, is it better to unleash the entire human race upon this other side, which is going to be completely and utterly stamped out because that's typically what humans do? Um, or do you just keep everything on the down low uh, and still people continue to die as they are cattle and fodder for whatever supernatural creatures are lurking in the shadows and that was my final campaign there so if anyone else had anything to add i was just going to say when i started to write this uh, earlier today i i thought of three different items one as kyle mentioned planet of the apes okay the apes while monsters are more human than monsters uh and the humans vice versa uh i also considered uh, for the magical aspect, uh, John Carter, uh, because, oh. you know, while they had the other creatures in there, again, a lot of human traits in there. Uh, and the third one was Dune, uh, which I did not care for, probably will not care for the remake if I even see it, but, uh, <laughs> it's bad. Dune. So that's, that's what I was going for, for the campaign, because, you're going to have to have some long-standing goal. You're, you know, like Kyle's Dresden Files. Do you tell the world? Do you hide it? Do you get shot in the head from a sniper? It's hard to say. Uh, the <laughs> easier aspect of running human-centric items would, of course, be the one-shots. Uh, and I, I gave these guys six different items. Uh, and I'm happy look to look at a single one. Nice. <laughs> uh, well then we'll start with David. David, pick one of those and tell me what you think. Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> Thanks for everybody reading the fucking outline. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I knew we were coming to this. And I'm just like, 
Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, think... th these are good choices, but they can be complex choices. I mean, you only got two hours to run it, so they can't be that goddamn complex. I like the peace and voice. Okay. How are you going to yeah. run peace and voice? Peace and voice. Um, yeah. Well, that is, <sighs> that is a good question. Of course, I probably have taken the hardest line. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, to uh, human communities, societies, or whatever um, that are at war, um, <coughs> uh, have envoys that come together to, uh, you know, uh, try to set some kind of uh peace accord because war who's it ever good for absolutely nothing um Why so are you old yeah i'm old yeah so, hey hey i recognize the reference he wrecks that oh, good god yeah i saw you're, it's you're all soldiers <laughs> <laughs> okay so so let's go with that and uh yeah i could have it that um you know, something supernatural has in, intervened, like some kind of supernatural phenomenon or something like that, and uh, it completely jeopardizes the 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 peace accord. Um, but it's the, a mysterious phenomenon. I mean, it's 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 alien is pretty much what it is, and what it could actually be is something from a far realm, or whatever is you know causing you know this this event and from this event uh it just uh it i don't know it, it almost I'm, what i'm thinking is almost kind of lovecraftian or something like that so you know <laughs> you know hey sorry to step on your toes kyle oh but hey it, hey they're it not is my a great toes thing to step on i i'm surprised you didn't go with star trek the undiscovered what, country. which episode there was Und a lot. undiscovered country Oh, yeah. Where the peace yeah. accord is being hampered by those in power. Kyle, pick yeah. one. Pick one? Uh, no, I'm not going to pick one because I'm more original and cooler than that. I don't Ooh. have to read from a script. Um, no, if we are going to do one shots, um, first of all, let me set this up. One shots, no one wants to do an all human campaign. Even if you do say, yeah, it's going to be like a Beowulf epic, it's going to be. The Odyssey and the Illinois all rolled into one. No one wants to play that. So we introduce them, reintroduce the players to the world via one shots. And at that point, um, do exactly what you would do in a normal one shot. If you're going to run a heist, run a heist. Uh, obviously pick some stuff up from other places to make that heist run smoothly. Um if we're going with, yeah, your players are in the know, um, or better yet, they're not in the know. And when they steal this item, the mummy or something like that comes to life and proceeds to tear this team apart and then disappears into human civilization, not to be heard from again. And I mean, maybe some of the players survive, maybe not. But at that point, uh, you've just introduced your players to this concept of oh it doesn't have to be a boring thing but there is going to be some excitement there um and so um yeah things that you would normally do a heist uh checking out a haunted house um going to slay uh grendel something like that um did you watch beowulf here recently or something when I think of the epics, normally I would go with Greece, but because of Theros, um, I've kind of been a little, a little off turn by Greece, and so I'm thinking more Norse, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, I am thinking that, or or uh, even just uh, go with uh, a Roman campaign where maybe you want to run a little bit of a war game and it's a group of centurions holding Adrian's wall as these bullheaded naked people come out of the woods um, charging with their woads to, to 
to break it down or something like that. Or, or you were part of the centurion host who uh, was going to invade or parlay and your entire war band was slaughtered except for the four of you now start running back as quick as you can because they're coming for you michael fassbender anyway uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, i mean we can do the court intrigue um but at that point you really have to highlight what being human is what that means and why it is as interesting as an elf or dwarf or something like that um and that ends up being a little bit of a bigger question um but when you start doing things that aren't um top of the D D list of things to do the more you kind of have to dig into that question in order to make the world feel both homely and fantastic at the same time. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll buy that. Now, see, I went with Court Intrigue. Spoiler alert. <laughs> MurderHoboCon.com. Uh, there is going to be a game called Cinderfella. Uh, the PCs find themselves in a town. Uh, there was recently a ball. The princess... Uh, fell in love with a dude, a hunky uh, himbo, shall we say, and uh, she's been nagging her dad. You know, his oh. name is Frank. Yeah, it's Count Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. the himbo is Frank uh, Valentine. <laughs> I forget what I named the himbo. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, your job is to find said dude and determine whether or not he's suitable material or if he's an asshole and needs to be given the heave ho uh i was talking to david about this in green room the nice thing about it is there's some witnesses who may or may not be able to help you figure out who this hunky dude is uh but each of those paths branches off uh so the possibility of choosing say path b still does not entail that hunky dude is a good guy he may still be a bad guy depending on how the party handles the encounters. So for the court intrigue, uh, that's what I had in mind. Um, And I'll just take that one. Uh, Because A, uh, the only people you're going to run into are the townsfolk. Now some of them are clearly demi-humans, but you don't have any bugbears or minotaur or dragons running around. These are all people you have to deal with. And, of course, we all know that when you're in an urban setting, uh, you can't just go lopping heads off without some consequences. And that has also been written into Cinderfella. I Uh, prove you wrong, sir. Let's go back through the lexicon of murder hobo. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, shall we go back? (laughs) Okay, not for this one. Go ahead. Yeah, Blake and Ernie did manage to get through Murder of the Doge, one of my all-time favorite episodes. Uh, <laughs> Our producer, uh, producer begs to differ. The producer has a different opinion on that, but uh, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, certainly, there there is a time for killing. Uh, you know, you're trapped in traffic, and there's some idiot with a turn signal on for the last three miles. And uh, anyway, uh, about the great X. That's right. It's time to again start a condition great called rage. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, so that that would be mine. The court entry. Uh, David, go ahead and pick another one. I think we got time for two more. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bef- but before I do that, I'm gonna highlight something that that Kyle uh, said about Beowulf. There is a book called Grendel, and it's the story. It's the legend of Beowulf told by Grendel and Beowulf turns out to be the monster. So you know what? I think I have that book, nice. and I was staring at it recently. That is that, that is might a be great why inspiration. It's coming up. I haven't read it though. <laughs> it's good. It's mm-hmm. good. Okay, so uh, let's see what's left. Spy mission, dispute settling. Uh, what? Let's go with spy mission. There we go. 
Okay, what's your spy plan? A spy plan? Uh, let's see. Okay, spy plan. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. I guess it could be. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, kind of like spy thing, but also like secret invasion thing. Let's think of you know the Trojan horse thing, and I can put the Emma Peace emissaries in on that too. So there you go. I tied them both together. There you go. The emissaries are really spies, and they're setting up the Trojan horse for the that episode sucks <laughs> <laughs> for the secret invasion. There you go. So. That's what I could uh, come up with. No, seriously, but you could play it up as, uh, as uh, yeah, like uh, that there's some kind of intrigue that, that would lead up to an event like that or something. So, um, you know, like I said, uh, envoys, uh, you know, um, one of the things that you suggested as far as with spies, like competing guilds and things like that. You know, Thieves Guild versus, I'm trying to think what would be another. Merchants Guild. Go, merchants co Guild. Competing merchants. Uh, you know, maybe there's a huge textile war in a city. Yeah. Yeah. Well, supposedly one of the histories of Waterdeep is that uh, it was the city was torn apart because of a guild war between the merchant guilds and stuff like that. How about uh, alcohol? Uh, Al Capone the Gnome. There you go. Oh, my God. That's what bitters is going to end up being. <laughs> I, I think I think he's already a fucking criminal. <laughs> oh yeah, he's going to start uh, eliminating people so <laughs> the competition. So. Say use guys a lot. He does. Okay, so. well that'll work. Kyle, you got okay. another one off the top of your head, or you want to pick one? Oh, um, at that point, I'd just go with a regular old investigation. Um. Now those are kind of tricky. Those are kind of tricky, yes. Um, in a because hmm. if your PCs are stupid, <laughs> yes, <laughs> or just ignore the clues, you're looking at a 22-hour Agatha Christie show. <laughs> well, you yeah. could be. You could be. Um, I mean, at that point, um, and we've talked about investigations on here before. Go back, watch. Uh, uh, episode some on Podbean if you want to look at that or check out our YouTube archive there um, but I mean with investigations we always have at least three tiers of clues um, one that you tell the PCs one that you tell the PCs if they specifically ask or say oh well I'm looking at the wall you see blood splatter that would indicate this and uh, uh, clue C which is, okay, specific PC incident game that's going to take them straight to kind of what's figuring out, you know, if you have that uh, Sherlock Holmes PC in there. Um, but at this point, I'm going to introduce that, you know, um, we're playing D&D. &D. They're supposed to be fantastical things, but humans themselves are tricky, devious enough to cause um to play on the fears of others to play on the fantastic fears of others and you end up having a scooby-doo investigation where it's old man jenkins who just yeah, wants i was gonna to, say that <laughs> yeah. um but if your players have been playing high fantasy D D for a while just going back to the old trope of old mr jenkins doing something but making it seem like it's a um, a ghost or a, well, I mean, that's not quite as fantastical. Um, a banshee, uh, perhaps a dragon that lives under the house um, that shakes the building. But in reality, it's old man Jenkins has dug down in, found a support, and if he cranks a... a, a a drill into the support, the entire house starts to shake. Um, and so your party has been hired to go slay a dragon underneath the house. And as they're walking around the grounds, just being like, well, how in the world do we get underneath the house? You start finding 
pieces of dirt that lead into a wall that well if you pull this candelabra you can open it up or something like that you find the deed that belongs to old man jenkins uh grandpappy super old ancient man jenkins um and you can either start to piece together or the players will find at the end of the day that you know um and this is you know what makes humans special human ingenuity in this case where yeah he took the time to dig a tunnel he took a time to find a pillar shake it enough to actually shake an entire house just by twisting a crank on a knob um and there's one way of adding the fantasy fantastical without actually adding monsters um super magical spells like wish or anything like that and it can just be mostly mundane that's it okay yeah i'll buy that i was Uh, thinking though like i would make it fantastical where it seems like that that it's mundane and all that but remember the movie reign of fire with christian bale and matthew mcconaughey Oh, is that the, the I've tank tried, and the, dra- the dragons? The dragons. There that. really no. is a dragon when he tells them. Yeah. There's this super weapon that this country's been using, just completely obliterated all of our tanks, all that. Uh, go sneak in there, figure out what's going on, and just destroy the super weapon. Yeah, no problem. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird that we discussed this because Saturday's episode is Vickers Soiree. Ooh. Ah, sounds like a mystery to me. Uh, folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. The Between the Good Rules luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. You got two hours to die. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. We hope you uh, were able to glean some knowledge off of our panel uh, or consider some of the things we've said to create your own scenarios. Uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, this is a brainstorming session and we love every minute of it. So folks, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit with us about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, the link's at the bottom. Uh, if you want to be on the show, mhobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. If you want to buy some cool custom dice, uh, run over to Twitter and talk to at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, and if you want to smell way better than Kyle's COVID, uh, go over to oddfishgames.com and pick up one of 60 Adventure Scents. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer only gooder than me, check out their Shine System. Don't forget, February 12th and 13th, MurderHoboCon.com. It's our second one. Uh, It's a two-day event. We got a ton of stuff to go to. Uh, A lot of games, a lot of things. Hell, we even have an arcade this time around. Uh, So check that out. Uh, We're going to give you a sneak peek at our venue here shortly. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Thursday for uh, Cacophony. Let's give him a big old kiss and wave, and I'll get us out of here. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> and I've lost my mouse, so I'm just going to dizzle around. Okay, bye, folks. Bye, folks. Diddle? What? Oh, Damn put it back it. in your pants. Yeah, see, no, you know what? I didn't have it right because I was screwing around. Now we're <laughs> leaving. Now we're now leaving. Now you learn.